What's up brand builders, Stephen Hurahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn what multi-branding is, how and when to use this strategy and how it can be leveraged to dominate a category or a market. Now, if you're new to the channel and you wanna build brands that go beyond the visuals and the logo using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you wanna fast track your results, make sure you grab the Pro Brand Strategy Blueprint. It's a free download and the link is in the description. Now, within brand strategy, there are a lot of terms that cross over and some of these terms cross over, they mean the exact same thing. Some have slight nuances and specifically within brand architecture, there are a lot of terms to wrap your head around. You have an umbrella branding strategy, you have a house of brands, a branded house, and you also have multi-branding. That's another one to add to the list, but it is important to understand the slight differences and the nuances so you can take advantage when the opportunity presents itself. So what is a multi-branding strategy? Well, Multi-branding or flanker branding as it's also known by is a strategy used by established brands. Now when an, an established brand within a specific category introduces another brand into that same category, they use the multi-branding strategy to do that. Now this new brand that's introduced to the market is completely different to the original brand within that category. It will have a completely different name, a completely different brand identity. In essence, it will look like a completely different brand. And this usually happens within an umbrella branding strategy and more specifically a house of brand strategy where you have a parent brand sitting on top and you have a multitude of brands sitting underneath all with their own identities, with their own names, acting as independent brands. So why use a multi-branding strategy? There's already an established brand within that category. Why introduce another brand into that same category to potentially compete with that existing brand? Well, it's not about competing and this is the key to the multi-branding strategy. Within a given category, there are only a certain amount of customers that you can serve within that category because there will be segments of the market that won't want what your brand has. So this strategy is all about increasing market share and appealing to more specific audiences. As I said, having an established brand is great, but if you're overlooking the needs and wants of a certain segment of the audience, they're never going to look towards the original brand. So therefore, they're overlooking that segment and missing out on possibly a large slice of the pie. So let's look at an example here to solidify the understanding of what the multi-branding strategy is all about. Now, Procter & Gamble is a house of brands with many different brands and one of their leading brands is Tide Laundry Detergent. Now Tide is a very, very successful brand and has a massive slice of the pie in the laundry detergent category. Now, why would Procter & Gamble want to introduce another brand into that category? Well, there are a segment of that audience that believe that the Tide brand is too expensive. They wouldn't buy the Tide brand because it is a little bit out of their reach. So. Procter & Gamble introduced another brand into that category called Cheer with less quality and a lower price and appealed to that segment of the audience that wanted a cheaper option in the market. So overall, Tide did lose some market share initially to the Cheer brand that was introduced, but overall, their market share overall for Procter & Gamble through the two brands ended up being much larger because of this multi-branding strategy. Now, another example of the multi-branding strategy will be from Toyota. Now, Toyota has a brand reputation in the market as a very reliable mid-range car, but they wanted to introduce a bit more luxury into the market. So it was decided that they shouldn't do that under the Toyota brand because the associations were with that mid-range reliability, not luxury. So they introduced Lexus into the market. Overall, Toyota was able to increase its market share and to be able to diversify and offer more luxury to a wider audience. So what are the advantages of a multi-branding strategy? Well, I've touched on them a little bit earlier. Really, it's all about market share. It's all about increasing that market share and having a broader presence within the market to be able to increase sales, increase revenue, and as I said, overall market share. So that is the cornerstone of that strategy. It's being able to grab a bigger slice of the pie while appealing to more specific segments of the audience. And what about disadvantages of this strategy? Are there any disadvantages? Well, 
it can go wrong and there can be some brand cannibalization there. You can have the two brands competing on certain levels and really not pulling in the same direction. If there is competition there, then it's not going to work in favor of the parent brand. So there are some management issues to consider. And again, if it's not managed correctly, this can damage the overall brand. So it is a risky strategy, not to mention how expensive it is to introduce a new market into a category. So there is a lot on the table in terms of risk and it can go very wrong. But if it goes right, there is a lot to be earned. Now, the multi-branding strategy really highlights the fact of how important it is to understand your audience and understand your market. You might have an established brand within your marketplace, but chances are you are overlooking a segment of your audience. They have unmet needs and those unmet needs represent opportunity one way or another, whether it's your brand who goes out and meets them or another brand. To take advantage of opportunities that do present themselves in a given category, it's important to understand brand architecture and how you can structure your brands or any sub brands that you might introduce to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. If you wanna understand what brand architecture is all about and how to use it, then this video will show you how. Until next time, brand like a master, and I'll see you in the next video.